a front loading washing machine door lock mechanism and this is genius this is this is such a clever design in so many ways not just because of the way it mounts in the machine it's got a little sort of lip here that hooks in the, the front uh, panel of the washing machine then it hinges up and then a couple of screws lock it in or sometimes the little studs and you have to go inside the machine put nuts in the back but uh, aside from the the mounting and the fact it's got things like I'm guessing that's for cable ties for a cable tie for tying the loom up aside from that it has three functions in here it's got the lock mechanism that will actually physically lock the door and stop it being opened it's got a time delay and it's all done in this instance thermally and it's got a switch contact that will only make contact when it's uh, in its lock mode and when the actual catch is in position so it is physically locked it's very neat I shall do to that in fact the best bet So if you look at your washing machine door handle, you'll see there's a sort of catch comes out that's shaped a bit like that. And that goes into a receptor, which is a sort of a slight sort of funneling shape. And as you push it in, it pushes this latch back the way. And then when it's gone through, uh, let's draw this as a more solid sort of mass of stuff. Uh, when it's gone through, it clicks back over and it hooks on the back of this uh, lock mechanism and opening it up is easy enough if, if the machine isn't locking it all you have to when you pull the handle in the door it will then push this back and it will just basically unhook from that sort of latch there however when you turn the washing machine on there's a little plastic slider I'll, I'll draw it above uh, from a sort of top view little plastic slider where that goes through, there's a sort of a, a hole for it. Um, and when you push that in, it actually pushes this plate down to the side. And then there's another hole at the other end and a square pin underneath, which is actuated by a heater mechanism. And if you turn the washing machine on while the door is open and that pin tries to come out, it can't come out because this slider is actually blocking it. But as soon as you close the door, or if the door is closed already, this plastic plate has been pushed down and it that hole there allows that uh, pin to pop through. You'll see this because I'm going to actually show you all operating in here. And when it does, it stops that plate, it locks it, it stops it sliding back. And what stops you opening the door at that point is the back of this plate because when you try to open it, there's the locking mechanism is physically locked. So there's actually a little bar there that's stopping it from actually going back so don't I mean one of the most common ways of breaking your washing machine lock is impatience you know it's going through its little time delay and you're dragging the hand you're saying oh hurry up and open and suddenly it does open the loud crunching noise and it never works again uh, the good news is that these things are cheap they're so mass produced um, I just looked a price up there indecent genuine washing machine door interlock £8.45 including shipping and as I say, they're fairly easy to change to technical people. Okay, 99.999% people are not going to change themselves, but to you and me, it's something that we actually would do ourselves. I shall show you this working. The, the way the thermal mechanism works is very clever, and the, the point of it is that if a washing machine is spinning at full speed, like 1,200 RPM, if it was just a solenoid lock and you'd turned it off at the wall, then the thing would still be spinning, but a solenoid lock would just unlock instantly and you could just open the door. And if you stuck your hand into that and the clothes sort of snagged round and hooked round your wrist, it could actually break your wrist. That's happened in the past when door interlocks have failed. Kids have put their hands into spinning machines and been injured. Um, the time delay gets round that. If I was to... Well, I'll show you. Let's say uh, that's the best bet, isn't it? So let's bring in the quick test, the cliff quick test, and I'll bring in the hoppy, the super flickery hoppy meter. I've been looking at other alternatives. You know what I've never found? One of these meters that displays apparent power as well as watts, you know, it'd be nice to have one that displays watts and VA. It's really difficult to find one that does that. 
So I shall plug the quick test into the quick test for those because people will ask is a device that lets you make quick connections. It's got little spingy contacts here that, and a safety interlock that when the lid's open, it disconnects this, but you can actually just pop wires in. This is used in workshops for testing things like this. Although that is pretty much a disposable item. It's, if it failed, you'd just automatically replace it as a routine thing. But it lets you hook the wires under and then when you close it down, and here's the when we want to watch the display here and see what it goes to, the flickery display. So at the moment, I can push this little plastic strip backwards and forwards and it just springs straight back. This is in the open mode. You can actually see, if I zoom down a little bit, if you look at the end here, when that slides back, you'll see the little plastic pin under it. Do you see the little plastic pin under there? That little pin is about to pop out. And when it does pop out, this won't be able to go back. And in not being able to go back, that would prevent the door being opened. So let's uh, zoom back out. So this contains a PTC thermistor. It's a little heater slug that initially has a fairly low resistance and it heats up very quickly but as it gets hotter it self-regulates the it will balance at a specific temperature and what that means is it starts off with 1k resistance and if i close this now it's going to start off maybe about 24 milliamps but then it will rapidly fall down so it'll start off a fairly high wattage but then you'll see it'll rapidly fall down to about say 2.4 watts so it's heating Did you hear that click? That was it locking. The power is dropping. It's currently about 3.8, 3.7, 3.5. It will gradually go down, depending on ambient temperature, just to a equilibrium point. Okay, so let's unplug this now. And it's still hot, so this is going to latch. If I then zoom back down now, and I push this back, you'll see it latch. Did you hear that little click? And this isn't returning to the full position. And the only way it's going to return is when that pin's gone back in. I can cheat, I can push that in now, and it will ping back to its original position. If it's still hot, it would then latch again, but in this case, it's cooled down. In reality, normally it takes about a minute to cool down. And the whole point of that is that if power failed, if everything went off or someone unplugged it from the wall, it would allow time for the spinning drum to come to, to a, a halt before it allowed you to open the door. Very clever. The other thing it's got, uh, I could do that on here, in fact. It has three connections. It's got the... Two, three, and four. Pin three, it works out as the common, I tested them. And it goes through a switch to show that the door is fully locked. And that is pin four. And it also has the PTC thermistor, which I'll draw as a resistor that will swipe through it in PTC. And that goes to pin two. So say for instance, if you applied live to pin three, um, then when the PTC was switched down to neutral, and it locked and the door was closed, then the live would then come through to pin four and that would actually power things like the motor and stuff like that and the machine would power a section of the circuitry. It usually is, I think, it's usually a full interlock. It means that the machine, even if something went wrong electronically, it can't actuate the machine if this lock interlock isn't in position. It is like a complete emergency stop, so to speak. It is a proper safety interlock, which is good. A safety interlock that has been cost optimised to the hilt. It's very, very clever. I think we should open this. So at the bottom here, we've got, if I pull these speed connectors off, it doesn't normally take the speed connectors as such. It normally has a little housing with those uh, spades in it that you plug the connector in. Uh, I'm going to try and open this. Not sure the speed of silicon stuff is. I did get this for our education, our entertainment, so it doesn't matter if it's damaged. I, I guess this is an adjustment. I think it is a little adjustment for the PTC thermistor or just something that holds a mechanism inside. I've taken one of these apart. It might even have been this one. Um, and I seem to recall I had to take the connector off first. Let's see if I can get that connector off. Well, that actually came off a lot better than I was expecting. That's good. I'm pretty sure I have had this exact one apart. 
Now, am I going to celebrate, falsely celebrate? For those of you wondering why my screwdriver occasionally lights up, it's a little test screwdriver and it's got batteries inside it that detects continuity from one end to the other. So when I'm poking about with things, you'll occasionally see it light up. Now that's off, let's see if I can get this. So there's one catch. It's surrounded by catches. It's, it's one of these things that's mass produced. It all just clips together. It is absolutely cost optimized. It's, it's genius, quite frankly. Whoever designed this, they, you know, if they're watching this video, they're quite justified in being quite smug at being, at noting that it's referred to as genius. It's definitely something that's been optimized over a period, long time, and they've just basically, it's just got a simpler and simpler mechanism for the mass production for the application. Oh. Right. Here is the bimetallic switch mechanism. It goes right into that plastic pin. Let's get down and closer on this. This is where maybe I should bring up the trumpy brick, but I shall do it here. Is this going to work? I shall focus. So there's the bimetallic strip mechanism. I can see one of the common electrical contact. This common electrical contact is powering the bimetallic strip probably through that little stud there. Um, the end of the strip here is pushing that little plastic pin in, and that plastic pin can't go down until I push this in, and then that can go down much further. Such a delicate mechanism. Such a clever design. Um, where's the contact? The contact is underneath, so that the contact will not make, it's right under, this is one of the contact rivets here, it will not make until this uh, actual thing can go down when this catch is pushed back by the, the latch and then that can actually click down. And that just leaves lifting this out. Well, you know what? I got this to tick to bits completely. It's riveted with plastic sort of rivets here. Now, what I could do, I could power this up. You wouldn't see much. All you'd see is it click down. But you know, that would be quite interesting. I could power it up while it's open. Uh, give me a moment, I'm just going to set that up. I'm just going to push the live onto here. And the switch contact is over there, which will become live. Um, so I want to make sure we get the right contacts here. So actually I've put the blue in that one. Okay, it doesn't matter. That's probably safer anyway that I do it that way around. Uh, right, tell you what, I'm going to put that down. I'm going to zoom, focus back down onto that. I'm going to bring the click test up and I'm going to connect it up. So quick test is to, to the side here. I shall pop the wires in. If the picture looks a bit grainy, uh, it's just because I'm zoomed up so close. I'll zoom out a little bit. That's probably better, isn't it? There's only so far digital zoom can go. So if I turn this on now, theoretically we could see that bimetallic strip. Now, what would be better if I actually jammed a screwdriver in here? Yeah, if I jammed a screwdriver in here so that, that pin can actually go all the way down, is this going to work or is it just going to blow up or something like that? It's heating. I think the fact the lid is off is going to actually screw this up. So I'm going to open the quick test here. Yeah. Because the lid is actually off, that's actually holding that in position. So this metal strip here must be the one that's actually bending. Is that bimetallic? Let's uh, open it up. Let's disconnect it. And then just burst those little plastic rivets, because this was got for our entertainment. So I'm going to burst this off, if I can. I can. I will try and slide that up. So there's the PTC heater block, which is red hot, still. It goes down onto this bottom connection here which has a couple of things going for it. It's got a connection point. Oh, that is 
uh, that is an adjustment screw that comes through here. Can you see that? The little adjustment screws coming through here. I shall try and, you know, let's bring in, let's bring in a, a reference, height reference. Let's bring in the, the chumpy brick. That's better. And then I can zoom down onto this and it will actually focus on it. That's nice. So what we've got here, we've got a little metal strip that bridges across here. And it gets adjusted slightly. So the PTC thermistor here, the little block, actually adjusts up and down against the bimetallic strip. This metal plate here is for thermal insulation so that the... Uh, the hot surface isn't pressing directly against plastic. This is all very clever. There's the contact for the output and that just leaves this assembly here which is doing so much. It doesn't even look bimetallic. This is the bit that's actually clicking up and down. But how does it... It's just on a sort of fulcrum position that's got this little sort of copper spring in there that makes it click up and down, but I don't honestly see any... It must just be the shape, it's not even bimetallic, it's just purely the, the high heat causes that to expand in a particular way that causes it to flick that contact up and down. That's clever, isn't it? Then off the end of that, there is the little plastic pin, the locking pin. Can I pull that out? Yes, I can. And when that does click down, that's the pin that goes down and locks the, the actual door by uh, blocking this little um, spring-loaded plate. This is clever. It's very clever. It's super, super cost-optimized. And this is doing everything. This is the, the heater and the time delay and everything. This is the device that actually triggers it, actuates it, and, uh, and adds that time delay, so the whole thing, the whole mechanism in here just has to cool down. And I timed it, I left it on for a while, and it was about 55 seconds before it actually unlocked, so that is roughly a minute. It's very clever, very neat. So that is a... Uh, that's fundamentally what's inside these things. Not that you'd ever want to open one, because uh, there's just no point opening them. They are... If, if it was an obsolete model or you just couldn't get one, then perhaps you could open it up. Certainly when I moved in here for the first, uh, when I first moved in, there was an old washing machine and the door was very temperamental. And it turned out that the contacts on the other side of the PTC thermistor, they'd reacted in some way and oxidised and it wasn't made a connection. And I found that by cleaning those, that restored normal operation to that machine. But there you go. Super simple, super cost optimized, designed for absolute mass production with the minimum possible number of components. That is very, very clever indeed. Is there anything else I could take off the back here? I could possibly. Oh, this, oh, look at that, it's just genius. Now that that's been unlocked, it lets you take off this, which then gives access to the sliding plate in here which the spring just goes into a recess in the plastic when pings out. And that's the little sliding plate. It's clever, isn't it? Very clever, but that is pretty much like every other component you'll find in a washing machine. It is, it's just optimised for mass production and low cost. Very, very neat indeed. I have something to add to this video. I was thinking that I didn't understand how this would have that sort of thermal effect. I, by just elongation alone or something like that. And it turns out that there is a bimetallic strip in the unit. This is the little metal strip at the bottom that gets adjusted up and down by that adjustment screw. And it's the one that makes one connection to one side of the PTC thermistor. Another side of the PTC thermistor connects onto that little dimpled connection there. And it turns out that when the PTC heats up, this metal strip here, because I have fired, prove this, this metal strip bends, and when it bends, it physically thrusts the PTC thermistor up against this mechanism, and that's what gives the sort of the, the trigger mechanism. So uh, it does have, this is, I'll cool this down in my hands to take the heat away, and then show you again that this is the bimetallic strip. Clever. Very simple. I was expecting the, the bimetallic strip to be sort of actuated remotely by that and not to be part of the actual 
contact system onto the PTC thermistor. That's very neat. I like that. That's just a very simple and well-refined design. 